Fujifilm's cameras have gotten very popular over the past year and one of the reasons is their film simulation features. In recent years, all the cool kids started to shoot film and because I'm totally part of the cool kids, I ended up falling into that rabbit hole hard. I spent hours upon hours developing film and being hunched over my really bad DIY scanning setup all while film got more and more expensive. Once I realized the monthly expenses on my film obsession had overtaken rent and food, I thought I can't keep doing this. So to fix this money sink, I just spent more money and bought a Fujifilm X-T30. I instantly fell in love with this camera and I especially had high hopes for the film simulation features. First, I was looking for some digital alternative that allowed me to get some similar characteristics to film. Secondly, I was interested in trying a workflow where I didn't always have to edit. Don't get me wrong, I like editing photos, but I also have thousands of photos on a hard drive over there. And I keep telling myself I should really get around to editing those, but instead of doing that I just go out and take new photos, which is a great solution to that problem. Anyways, here are my top film simulation recipes that will give you those sweet tones and spare you the back pain from scanning film or sitting at your desk editing photos all day. First off, we have Blue Hour Vibrance, which is my own recipe, look at that. I created this recipe to really make those blue hour shots pop and enhance that purple and pink afterglow you get right after the sun has set. Got me feeling so free. It uses the Velvia film simulation and a pinkish white balance tint to get the most out of those blue hour colors. This definitely isn't a subtle effect. It's like yelling your order through the restaurant so loud that the chef can hear you in the kitchen instead of just talking to the waiter. <laughs> This strong effect means it works great for blue hour and some nighttime shots, but everything else doesn't really work with this recipe. But that's where the next one comes in. The Portra 400 recipe by Fuji X Weekly has been the default on my camera for ages. It just gives you a nice and warm effect that is super versatile. Even if I'm just shooting raw, I keep this recipe enabled because it gives a nice and warm look without going overboard. The best thing about this recipe is that it's quite versatile, but there always is a trade-off with recipes because they just give you a set of predetermined settings. On the one side of the spectrum you have settings that are quite strong but fit a certain situation well, like the blue hour vibrance recipe that just fits blue hour well and if you try to use it on a portrait in midday light it wouldn't look great. On the other side of the spectrum you have more subtle editing that doesn't give a very strong look but can be applied to photos in almost any situation or lighting condition. The Portra 400 recipe is somewhere here. You can use it in a lot of daylight situations and there it gives a great look. Just just going indoors can give you some problems because of the fixed white balance. Okay, why am I telling you all of this? Well, on one day a couple of months ago, I was in Denver with my X-T30. I was ready for some street photography and it just started snowing randomly for some reason, so the conditions were perfect. But I did something stupid. I accidentally set my X-T30 to JPEGs only, even though I was planning on editing the RAW files later. And to add insult to injury, I bumped one of the dials and accidentally locked my ISO at 12,800. Once I realized that a bit later, I thought, oh god, how have I managed to mess up this bad? The images are quite grainy because of the recipe, but these images are extra grainy because the ISO was way too high. And the Portra 400 recipe tried its best, but the lighting was very flat this whole day and I wasn't really happy with the colors yet. I felt like they needed to be a bit more dramatic. So I did something that will probably land me in photography jail and strip me off all my credibility. But I just took the JPEGs and added my Lightroom presets on top. Which really shouldn't work, but the images turned out surprisingly nice.
At some point, I finally realized that I had accidentally set the ISO to 12,800 and then I fixed that. But at this point, I still didn't realize that I was in JPEGs only mode. So for the entire weekend, I just continued to shoot JPEGs without knowing it. I finally realized it when I imported the images into Lightroom on the plane back. So yeah. That was just stupid. <laughs> On the second day of exploring Denver, the weather cleared up and I can't explain why, but these images from the Denver Union Station turned out so good. Like, is this actually a viable method? Just using JPEGs with the recipe and then adding a Lightroom preset on top? It feels illegal, but why does it work so well? <laughs> By the way, you can get my Analog Vibes Lightroom preset pack for just $5 at the link in the description. This allows you to get that sweet film look on your images, no matter which camera you're using, even on your phone. I don't really have any sponsors or anything, but thank you to everybody who buys the preset pack and supports me so I can keep making these videos in the future. Let's continue with the next recipe, which by total coincidence is another one made by me. This is the punchy B&W recipe I've already shown in one of my past videos. It gives you a super contrasty black and white look that I love for shooting architecture and industrial stuff. But you can of course use it for pretty much any setting. It's also great on days where the lighting is flat and you just want some extra drama in your photos. Just make sure you get the exposure of your subject right, because this recipe absolutely shits on dynamic range. It blows out the highlights and hides your guilty pleasures in the shadows. If you're looking at dynamic range, this is pretty much the most undynamic recipe you can make. If it were to make a breakdance video, it would just be a stick laying on the ground. But I like this look and you should really give it a try. Next up is the vintage cola color recipe by Fuji X Weekly. This recipe gives you a nice desaturated look. You can use this in a bunch of situations, but I love the muted greens and blues it produces. By the way, if you have an older Fujifilm camera and don't have all of the settings that are shown in the recipes, just enter as many of the settings as you can and it's usually fine. This next recipe is another one by me. It's like I'm giving myself awards. <laughs> And while we're at it, I'd also like to give myself the most recipes featured in an FUTC video award. And I'd like to give you the award for best FUTC subscriber. But for that, of course, you'll have to subscribe, you know, so... I've dubbed this recipe Golden Embrace because it's super warm. It uses the Astia film simulation which is pretty saturated but has less contrast. As you can probably tell, this is great for sunny days, golden hour and sunsets. Whenever those golden rays are blasting and you just want to amplify that. This is like holding a megaphone in front of your lens, but like a sun megaphone. Yeah, this analogy is falling apart. <laughs> Of course, there also are days where the sunlight would rather stay home and binge watch Too Hot to Handle while eating chips on the sofa. And that's where the next recipe, Moody Madness, comes in. Which is just another one by me. Yeah, I'm just gonna give myself another award real quick. This is for those days where the weather is just a bit meh and you want to give your shots some life and lean into those moody tones. This recipe tries to give a bit more contrast for days with flat lighting and the white balance shift is on the extreme end. This definitely is a strong look, but I really like it and I feel like it gives the images a very nostalgic, dreamy feeling and it's really fun to use. You know what else is fun? This video where I take a single camera, a single vintage lens and a single battery on a 10 day photography trip. Click here if you want to see how it turned out and yeah, comment your favorite film simulation recipe down in the comments and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye!